Good afternoon, and thank you for joining the webcast. My name is Rhonda Wellheit, and I'm the Awards and Chapter Relations Associate and Staff Liaison to the Award Committees. Today we're going to be looking at how to prepare your nomination, what to expect after the judges meet, and for those of you who have never uploaded a PACE nomination, a brief how to do that at the end of the webinar. Please submit your questions in the chat box, your, and uh, I will answer those questions at the end of the program. First, we're going to talk about some important deadlines. June the 3rd <clears throat> is the deadline at, for your PACE nomination. You can see that it's at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. That's the cutoff. I wouldn't wait until 11.59 p.m. because you might be right in the middle of submission. So that is the deadline that you need to know about. July 1st is the PACE Committee Conference Call. That's when the judges will meet and review, and we're, well, they're going to be reviewing since June 3rd, but that's when we're going to meet and review uh, the nominations, and that's when the committee, which is comprised of the president of APWA, the president-elect, and the three most recent past presidents. Results may not be shared until July 9th due to the holiday. So even though they're going to meet on July 1st, you may not hear your results until after the holiday. September 9th is the date of the award ceremony. <clears throat> it's still going to be held on the Monday evening during PWX, and this year it's going to be at the Washington State Convention Center. So now we're going to talk about how to create a great nomination. And it's best to have a team or a very enthusiastic leader to work with the chapter executive committee on this all year, making sure the criteria are met, the best practices are addressed, and the specific awards needed are nominated. So right now, um, I would like for you guys to answer in the chat box do you guys have a team? How, I mean, if you have a committee, let's just say this. If you have a committee, write your name and committee. Or if it's just you, just put your name and you. And if you guys could do that for me right now, that'd be great. In the chat box. It seems, right now, it seems like pretty even. It seems like maybe a few of you have the entire committee or the board behind you. There's a few of just yous. So, um, yeah, I feel, kind of feel sorry for the just yous. You're going to be very busy in the year, um, and especially if this is your first time. So let me, let me just cover this. I will give you a brief rundown about what some of the other chapters who have done this many, many years and have been very successful. Here is uh, some of their pointers that they've given me through the years. How the chapter prepared to submit. They reviewed the criteria and the best practices. The submittal information the year before we planned to submit to ensure eligibility, meaning they wanted to make sure they uh, nominated the correct awards if you have more than 500 in your chapter, you need to submit a top 10 nomination and three other awards of your choice. If you have less than 500 members, and this is as of December 31st of the year, then all you need to do is submit one award nomination of your choice. They requested submissions from National in order to see examples. They did this for other awards and they did it for the PACE. You can contact me, for examples, or you can go out to the uh, Chapter Leader Resources area and you will find examples of different awards and the PACE there. They discussed areas of concern and how to work on those at board meetings. I think that was a great idea because you have to be prepared with the best practices to uh, comment on why 
or your chapter isn't doing something. So this is great. And so they looked at their weaknesses ahead of the time, probably during a planning session. Um, this chapter said the board members broke the submittal into sections, and that's also a very good idea. The benefits the chapter received from submitting was reviewing the best practices helps the chapter to see areas that we need to improve on as well as what we're doing well. Chapters annually look at benchmarks and we need to meet and discuss, allow for suggestions and create new, new ideas and new promotions. And the lessons learned that chapters have submitted to me is the top 10 awards nominations criteria we made an effort to encourage all of our chapter awards program winners, nominees to submit to national and board members were willing to help them review their, not, their submission. And they also say this, and I say this too, start early. The earlier you start, the better your nomination is going to be. So that is what I've gotten from some of those chapters who have done this many times and has always succeeded in getting their PACE award. So that is one of the, the best advice to creating a good, great nomination. And a great submission will include a filled out best practices form. Every yes or no box check where you said no to a practice, you need to use the notes section to explain why. The judges will look at that, and if it's not addressed, it's not going to go favorably with your renewal, depending on how many you've left blank. So I would definitely um, start on the best practices throughout the year. Try to see what you can do, see where your weaknesses are. So again, that's one of the best things that you can do on that uh, front. So a great PACE nomination will have the executive summary at the beginning and talk about the innovative programs and efforts implemented that year to impact the chapter members and the community. The executive summary will also include areas improved in the past year and what the chapter has done in that year. So you always want to start out with your executive summary. And you need to uh, talk about your membership initiatives and, uh, and what you've done to improve the chapter by taking it to that higher level. A great PACE nomination will go in order of the criteria, addressing each criteria, excuse me, addressing each category under the four topics as you can see on this screen. The judges want you to go in that order. That's, they don't want to hunt for the information. So, pl and so please, when you create your nomination, summary first, and then just go one, two, three, four, address the categories below. Even if you haven't done it, it doesn't mean you're not going to get the pace. They want to know what you've done, maybe what are you going to do to improve that area. They want you to address it. And a great nomination will cover the period of January 1 through December 31st. So you're going to be covering 2018. That's how the pace. They don't want to see something five or ten years ago. They don't want to really hear about your glory days. They want to just know what went on between January 1 and December 31st of the previous year. If the chapter has done a survey, the judges are always interested in what the members think, so please include the purpose of the survey and what the results were. They're very interested in that, and so is the membership department. We always like to hear what the members are thinking and how and what, why you did the survey and what were the results of the survey. So here are some of the outcomes that can happen. So the judges have met, and, and so what can happen is, is, one, congratulations, you've won. Or two, you were, will receive the PACE this year, but we have some concerns. We feel the chapter needs to address. Or you get that dreaded regret letter. 
Thank you for the time you invested in submitting the chapter's PACE nomination, but unfortunately, the chapter did not receive a PACE this year. I think there were seven chapters that got a letter of concerns last year. If you're one of those chapters on this um, webcast, you need to make sure you've addressed those because that could, if you don't address what the concerns were, and some of the, those of you who are doing it for the first time this year and you haven't seen that letter, contact me. I will give you a copy so that you can make sure that you've addressed it because if you don't address it, you will not get a PACE award. They will not give you a PACE. They, you will get a regrets letter if you don't address the concerns. So I, want, I just want to kind of make that clear because, um, again, these judges, they sit in this committee for five years. Like I said, it's the president, president-elect, and three most recent presidents. So that's a five-year commitment on their, ter on their uh, time. So they kind of know what you're, you're doing. They know what chapters are doing, and they, and they want to see that. They want to see what you're doing, but they want it clear and concise and to meet the criteria. So some of, one of the main areas that the judges look at and they've noticed, these are some of the areas you might get a letter of concerns, is community service. Lack of chapter sponsor community service and too many agency-driven community service programs that are not chapter-driven. It's great that you show up for a city's community service project, but the chapter should be leading something as well. And most chapters think they're too small. They don't have the manpower. But if you just sit out a tub for a meeting and collect canned goods or eyewear or school supplies, that's a start. I had um, sent everyone that pre-registered for this a um, paper I did, and it's called 30 Community Service Project Ideas and Resources. So. Uh, you can unmute your phone if you have any questions for me right now about the community services. Uh, I'll be able to take them, but um, go ahead. And I just wanted to also notice, note to you that the website resources, I listed several great um, websites that can also help you. I really like the bumblebee um, that you see the photograph on there here is because you can give away bumble bands and bumble Bumble bands are strips of paper with seeds for bee-friendly plants. And I think that's also just very good and very um, compatible with the environment. So you're also kind of helping, and that can also go for sustainability, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So does anyone have any questions about community service or if um, some of the other concerns that you feel if you've gotten a concern letter that you want to talk about, you can contact me. We don't have to do it here, and we can go into that further. So, hey, Rhonda, this is Bethany Mains with the Washington chapter. You just said you listed um, website resources. Where did you list them? On the 30, it was an attachment that I sent out to you when I sent out a reminder this morning, and it, and it's. Uh, the fact there were two attachments. It was a sustainability brochure and this document called 30 Community Service Project Ideas and Resources. It is also out on the chapter leader resources that you can also go out there under awards and you can download it. So that is, um, it has some really great ideas and I've uh, put it to public works, to community, community related service projects and community service projects for children. So okay, well, be a, I don't think I got that reminder, so I'll have to go dig that up from someone who did. I, I will. I will send it to you. I will send it to you. Just send me an email so that I and I will send it to you. Great, so, thanks. You're welcome. So, um, community service is big on the judges. I mean, it is one of the criteria. So we want you to make sure that you have some chapter initiated community service projects for your members. The next um, two things that really the judges um, are concerned about is sustainability, sustainability and advocacy. So your sustainability 
has it, it, the C4S, that's what stands for, that's their logo, Center for Sustainability, has an online brochure called Promoting Sustainability in Public Works. And this answers the questions, what does sustainability in public works mean and what does the Center for Sustainability do? And there are many, many resources on the website, including a video and a PowerPoint you can share at a meeting or link it to a newsletter. There are also some articles you can also uh, put into your uh, newsletter. You can put those links. You can drive that over for the, your members to read. And that's one way that you can help meet the sustainability requirement for the PACE. And once you look at that website, it's just fabulous. Ann Jackson is the one who handles the Center for Sustainability. She would be more than happy to help you reach out to staff. That's what we're here for. And she can also probably give you a lot of other ideas that would fit your chapter size and what your chapter can do. Under Government Affairs on the APWA website, um, under Contact Congress, you can register your email address and our DC office will let you know about upcoming action alerts. You can make this chapter advocacy drive with your members. Your chapter can sign up for the APWA Washington report, include something that might be of interest to your members in your newsletter, visit the site, and think about ways you can use the many resources listed. You may even invite a DC staff member to come and talk about advocacy or sustainability at one of your chapter meetings. So those are the three main areas uh, that the judges are going to be looking at to see uh, if you've addressed those. And, and, and that's kind of their um, problematic areas. They also want to see an um, improvement in documentation. And uh, improvement in documentation, uh, meaning that you're not providing enough detail or substantiating the chapter's achievement, not addressing everything in the criteria. And most non-addressed items, are, like I said, are the sustainability, advocacy, and community service. One chapter forgot to put in the dates to the, their meetings. They don't want to see your newsletters or your minutes. They're not going to read them. They don't have the time. But they want to, they, you're supposed to um, let them know how, about what the attendance looks like. And so they want you to at least, you know, here's the, this is the date of the meeting. This is the focus on that meeting and what happened. Here's how many came. You don't need to send them the minutes. You don't need to send them the newsletter. So those are some of the things that you need to be aware of as well. Now we get into the regrets. And let me tell you, the committee anguishes over this, but it happens. Either you received a letter of concerns the previous year and the chapter didn't address those issues. So the following year, if that submission did not address those things, they would regretfully feel that your chapter will not receive the PACE. So please don't let a letter of regrets keep you from trying again. So we're going to go ahead and, um, again, there's examples of other PACE on the Chapter Leader Resources area. You can download or you can email me and I'll be happy to give you some examples that you can use. And another um, area um, that I'll let you know for those of you who have done this before, you need to change, don't show the same photographs, don't show, um, you, you usually create a template, which is great. It, it saves time. I get that. But again, the judges have, they serve five years. They've seen things. They want you to make an effort and make sure that everything's updated. They want to make sure that you, the photographs aren't the same that's been used for the last two or three years. And um, so again, look at your template. See where you can update that. See if you can change things up, because that's um, another issue that they might have. They may think that you're not doing anything new, so the things that your chapter is doing that's great may be overlooked. Now with the um, regrets, and I think I've covered about everything that 
I've seen and heard about when a regrets letter is issued. Um, again, I'm going to open it up for questions because the next slide we're going to get into how to actually go online and nominate or submit your PACE. So do I have any other questions? I see that it says my audio is cutting out. I'm sorry about that. Um, and the link that I can provide, I can provide you a link to download, but it's the chapter leader resources link. So you're going to have to use your own username and password. What you're going to get is it's not going to let you just go and click on that link and get it. It's going to ask you to please insert your username and password. But I can definitely uh, give you a link, but just be aware that it's nothing wrong with the link. It's just that it's a link into a password protected site of our website. It's the chapter leader resources. Is there a limited number of awarded each year? No. Um, you're not judged against other chapters. You're being judged just as you, a chapter, and what you're doing with that out with the criteria. So that's why you it's very important that you address all of the criteria. And so you're not going to be judged against other chapters. It's just strictly on your chapter and the criteria. And we have 38 chapters that can nominate for the PACE this year. I hope all 38 do. I hope um, sometimes we have three or four that just don't even go through this. But I hope they all do. It would be great. I think that um, the ones that do win it each year, it's, uh, they seem to really enjoy the recognition. They, you not only get a very nice framed certificate, but you'll get a banner patch. And you can put that on your banner. What more would you want? So I hope that uh, each of you do complete the submission, especially uh, first timers. Again, I'm here for you. So let me make sure I unmute your phone uh, if I have any other questions regarding this. How important are photos? Photos are important. Um, you do need to submit some photos. And usually chapters will submit photos of their events, maybe their uh, community service. We had, uh, they, you know, you take pictures if you're out picking up trash, if you're, um, even if you're doing a membership promotion at a golf club, you know, or golf course, yeah. Photos are important. Um, it just enhances the nomination. Anyone else? Okay, with that, we'll go into how to submit your nomination. The awards website, w, well, our website is apwa.net. And you simply go into the on the home page. You don't even have to sign in. This isn't password protected. Non-members can get to this area because sometimes non-members submit uh, awards. So under about, you'll see awards, and you can see there that you can then click on that, and then you'll see awards criteria and forms. Another way you can get to this is. Once you hit the About and then Awards, you'll see this one whole page. It's, this is redesigned. It's new. I, I like the layout. I, I put in more information this year on uh, due dates, timelines, and resources here because I get a lot of people wanting to know what's going on down the road. So it kind of lets you know where the due dates were and the timelines, what's going to happen once you submit. But where you see the big yellow arrow, uh, that's where you're going to click to get into the awards criteria submission section. And you're going to find the fourth one down is your Presidential Award for Chapter Excellence. This is where you can download the criteria, the Chapter Best Practices form. And you can also uh, click where it says Submit Online. That's going to take you off the APWA website and onto the Omni Contest website. 
Now, you're, you're not on APWA's website. Do not be confused. You do not log in with your APWA username and password. You are going to register, if you've never done this, or you're going to register, and it's just going to ask some information, like contact information, and you're going to assign yourself a username and password. Remember that password. I do not have access to get a hold of that. So um, I couldn't help you if you lost your password. I'd ha I would have to contact Omni, and then they would probably have to help you. So once you do that, then you can log in, and every page is got the instructions on there. But if you have problems, once even after you log in, I'm here to help. Under the Contact Us button there, that's my username, or excuse me, that is my name, my contact information, my direct phone, call, phone line, and the uh, email in which to reach me. So with that being said, does anyone have any questions? Oh, I see that you, no, it's not going to be the same username and password as your top 10 because this is a completely different uh, URL. So you're going to have to uh, register another username and password. Anyone else? Okay. I think that um, I appreciate everyone's attendance. For all of you who this is your first time, don't be uh, don't think it's going to be scary or anything like that. I'm here to help. I appreciate everyone's attendance, and thank you so much for taking your time out to do so. If any of you would like to know how to get around the chapter leader resources area, Thursday I will be doing another webcast on that. So send me an email, and I will send you instructions to participate Thursday at 2 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it.